So, we are discussing the design spiral before the puja vacation. So, there are number of spokes that uh, this is called field development design spiral. Now, in this uh, design spiral, uh, you will find that uh, the platform itself is a part of the design spiral. So, it is one of the spokes of the design spiral. So, here actually in the offshore field, this is called the field development concept or field design, design spiral, the platform is a spoke. So, the I think the, if you see, that means this is what we had constructed last class. So, here we start, if you start from here, either you can start from the innermost ring or the outermost ring. So, it starts with the, uh, with the feasibility study, then it uh, goes uh, to this extent and then it will go on with a number of iterations. So, this is one iteration. So, the, you will perform number of iterations before you come to the final design. So, that is the concept of the design spiral. So, it goes on like this. So, you complete this is as, as soon as you come here. So, this is 360 degrees. So, one iteration is complete. So, like this you keep on doing. Now, the, what will happen in your ship design? You only perform the design spiral for a ship. But unlike in this case, you have to do the design spiral for the whole field. So, that is called the field develop, development design spiral. So, here you start and you go here, then it comes like this and you finish off here. So, this is the and the spokes we have already defined. So, they we have already you have four spokes and you can have uh, one more. So, these are called the spokes, that is the uh, design elements. So, here you start. So, the spokes you find these are the external constraints you have defined. This you begin your feasibility study out here. Feasibility study starts from here and the <coughs> final design will come somewhere here. This is your final design. Now, in between you have to pass through the different spokes. So, here you have external constraints. Now, these I have already, last class I have already told you, so I am not going to repeat. Now, here you have reservoir management. Then you have environmental criteria. Then drilling. So, you can see the job is, uh, if you go to offshore, the job is much more difficult and requires lot of planning and more rigorous than your ship design project. Then because you have to do the total field development facilities, uh, you are only here, this platform. So, what type of platform you are going to select? And this is your offtake. The other one is economics. So I have discussed all these heads. Uh, only three are left, is it? Economics, offtake, and uh, the platforms. Now here, the facilities I have already told you. These are oil and gas. You should have some knowledge of oil and gas processing. Why? The reason is 
you have to uh, know what are the equipments that will come onto the platform. Uh, ships actually, if you do the deck outfit, you should know uh, what is the windlass, then winches, then your cargo handling gear. So, these will come in your GA. So, your facilities and oil and gas processing facilities will come in the GA plan because it is a uh, deck arrangement. Basically, your platform is a uh, deck design, is not it? So, all your facilities are going to be uh, on the deck. Now, remember if you go on this uh, facilities design as naval architect, you should have some idea because uh, last class I told you how to segregate the different areas. So, that is the job of the uh, naval architect, how to make the GA plan, how to segregate the areas because there is some horizontal and vertical separation, is not it? And in between you have to build some firewalls, coffer dams and all these things because of the um, risk of fire. So, that is your oil and gas. Next you have injection. What is this injection? Injection is sometimes they inject uh, steam inside the borehole in order to um, jack up the pressure. So, unless there is a certain pressure in the reservoir, your oil is not going to come up. So, especially if your oil, the amount of oil goes down in the reservoir, then you have to inject steam. Normally, they inject steam and that is the safest gas. This is called injection and sometimes in the blowhole, in order to stabilize the dough, you have to inject cement also. So, all these are the processing facilities and the last one is your accommodation. And there are other, this is just the basic minimum requirement. So, these uh, facilities have to be laid out properly on the deck and you have to do the horizontal and vertical separation. So, now your platform will have number of decks. So, how you lay out each deck? So, you have to do it in CAD that is called layering and interfacing between the different zones. Uh, you have to connect all these spaces by means of an access plan, your piping and all these things you have to do. So, this is the, your main work that you have to do as this is essentially your this, this is your GA, general arrangement drawing. Okay. So, this is the one part of it. Now, platforms is another part of the whole story. So, now what type of platforms you are going to install? Now, so this is the conventional jacket. So, conventional jacket is a fixed type of structure, remember that. And then you have gravity, that is, gravity is also comes to some extent under fixed platform. Then you have compliant. Compliant, I have told you because of the mooring buoys, those are called compliance. Then the other is, they, here it is floaters, but under floaters also there are many different categories like your TLPs, then your semi submersibles, then your jack ups, etcetera. So, you can see the design of all these things is just only part of one, one spoke of your design spiral. So, you, you have n number of floaters. Then all these, if you have floaters, then you have what is called a subsea template. So, that is the, uh, this is called the well head assembly. This is on the seabed where your casings are connected and also it comes down. Now, off take also, here the major uh, part is your pipelining. Now, since uh, uh, you have to do a lot of engineering work, you see, uh, in, in coming to the design and construction phase, as an engineer, if you go, uh, you have to do a lot of engineering and pipelining is one aspect of offshore engineering. So, this we will talk about in more detail in your that offshore technology class. Then you have metering is, if you have pipeline, you should have metering is how much of gas and oil you are getting out, how what is the measurement of flow rates and all these things you have to do. Storage is in tanker, uh, shuttle tanker and if you store inside the platform, then also you, you have storage inside the platform. And e economics is part of cost. Then cost is scheduling. So, this uh, briefly I have told you how to do scheduling. Scheduling, yeah. 
scheduling is the simplest method is construction of a bar chart. So, uh, I do not know whether you have studied all this or not, but if you go for all this engineering you will require first you require all these uh, this actually <laughs> is not part of the whole study. Now, you make uh, you just brush up your funda on this uh, bar pie chart. this is called uh, production planning. Now, those of you who are uh, going into the shipbuilding and offshore engineering, they have to do production planning in the, now in the, if you go to the, uh, your uh, shipyard, you will have, you will see they have a different design department and a different production department, okay. So, the design department will also will perform all the, the ship design processes, just I told you making your lines drawing, then your general management drawing, how you lay out the facilities and all. Nowadays, all this thing is done in AutoCAD and you have to be a little bit very efficient in your AutoCAD 3D modeling and all these things you have to do. Because you, uh, once your final design goes to the shop, then uh, it is final, then you cannot change it. Otherwise, they, they have another thing that is called reworking. Now, reworking is very costly in shipbuilding and offshore, is not it? Because in offshore, if you go, that means you have uh, made the whole program of a pipeline which is going under the sea. So, basically, if you want to change the path of the pipeline, there will be huge cost. You just cannot think about it, okay. So, in shipbuilding, you always try to avoid this reworking. So, this uh, problem uh, actually in old in olden shipyards, in old uh, shipyards which are they have not progressed, they have done a lot of automation. Nowadays, is the highly, shipyards have become highly automated, you see. They have all the, they have implemented uh, GRAC and all, they have implemented SAP and all these things, ERP, SAP and all these things are there, okay. So, all the data processing and data management is done in the, your design and planning office. So, you have to be uh, very much conversant with the IT environment in your uh, uh, design office. So, anyway, so uh, these are some of the things which you should uh, consider. Now, uh, some of you will be posted in the design office and some may be in the production planning zone, production planning in the this thing. Now, there also you will be asked to make this bar and pie chart. So, bar and pie chart, you, you first segregate the uh, different stages of production, okay, like your uh, hull shop, uh, the, the main hull fabrication, how much of the uh, this thing, you know, uh, design uh, fabrication in the shop. So, again then you have to interface with the ship, uh, the hull shop people. So, he will tell you that I have so much of drainage uh, facility, this much of block assembly I can do at a time, this much time you do. So, lot of data is required from your shop, shop data has to be analyzed properly in the design office. Because why it is required, the main problem is you have to give a proper scheduling if you have backed a contract and previous to that, you know, so, so buy and purchase is part of production planning. Now, here also they, they, you will be asked to make yes, a tender document for those new ships. So, tenders and contract, preparation of tender document, so, how you are going to prepare a tender document. So, this itself is a large activity in the uh, planning uh, uh, office, in the planning stage. So, the tender document preparation first there are two aspects, one is your technical side, that means what is going to be the uh, functions of your ship or offshore structure, what you are giving to the client. So, that has to be specified in quite detail in the tender document. Now, remember tender document, making a tender document is very crucial because your, this is where your, the major profit of the shipyard is going to lie. So, you, you cannot give any arbitrary or something which is misplaced, it is not required in the tender document, otherwise you will be caught. Because tender document is a valid legal document, it is a contract is a part of it and remember if you want to go offshore, 
this contract, there will be number of parties in the contract. Unlike, unlike your ships, when you are ordering a ship, you just come across one client. But here actually the contracting parties will be not one, but will be many. Probably your government and number of private contractors and vendors will be there. So signing a contract in a tender document is very, very crucial and very important because the profitability of the shipyard is here. So how much profit you can gather from the garner from the contract, remember any uh, clause in the contract which is going against you, you should not put into that, you should not sign that, isn't it? Otherwise you will be caught on the wrong foot and there are a lot of penalty clauses. You will find in ships if you go for a contract, one of the favorite penalty clause is a ship. Suppose the ship, if it is carrying the cargo and it is not going at a particular speed, then the owner will sue you in court, isn't it? Then you have to, you are penalized for not giving the proper speed. So that is part of the naval architect's job. So after sea trial, he has to see whether the ship is giving a particular speed or not. So here in the offshore, actually, what your platform is supposed to deliver certain amount of oil that is called production rate. Now, if it fails on that, then you are penalized and penalty will come in so probably some thousands of dollars per day, isn't it? So that is the naval architect has to may, may prepare a valid tender document with all the legalities and technical specifications. So this will come in tenders and contracts. So this is your production planning stage, the simplest form is your bar and pie chart. Now after this, I do not know whether you have studied this, but you should study, uh, you should have some knowledge of part CPM techniques. So this is the critical, this is I think production uh, uh, review technique this is called and this is called the critical part method. Part CPM techniques is another very pet uh, subject of your, the, the planning engineer. So the planning is, is one of the techniques, but the other techniques have evolved. So these are, uh, if you um, try to get some knowledge in this or you got to exposure in ship, this is normally used in ship production. Ship, same thing with offshore production techniques. So because you have to uh, properly uh, point out at what particular point of time a, a shop is going to deliver so much amount of uh, work. So that is called production planning. You have to do a lot of production planning in the planning office. So this is the part CPM techniques are employed and then after this, uh, uh, this is a new topic has come. This is called uh, enterprise risk management. So offshore structures are very risky. So you have to have some risk calculation or enterprise risk management, you have to do risk calculation. Whether it is going to fail or not, whether your investment is having some risk. So risk calculation has to be done. So these are all management study and the other is economics. These, these are typical, all these are uh, the planning process. Now in economics, you have to find out what is the net present value of your project that is called NPV. Your NPV calculation you have to do. Then you have to, this is normally done from cash flow. So you have to formulate a class cash flow diagram for the whole project, right from your inception, say to after 25 years of life of the platform. So, so much money has been invested and how much return I am going to get from the project. So that is called required rate of return. So these are two things you have to calculate. Sorry. So remember, these are some of the basic uh, 
the management and production concepts which you have to know. I do not know whether the, you are doing any production, uh, reading any production subject or not, but these are things which are required. If you go in the in your professional life, you will be asked to do all this. So, one, these are one, two, three, four, five items. Economics, you no need to go into the, the whole the gamut of economics, you just study NPV, this is called net present value and RRR is required rate of return, cash flow. So, any project before you sink money into it, you should calculate the required rate of Why? Suppose your required rate of return is less than the bank interest, then nobody will like to invest money in that. Bank is giving say 7.5 percent and your calculated rate of return it is coming to 6 percent. So, that means then why I should invest money in your project? I can might as, as well keep it in my bank where it will give a higher rate of interest. So, this is what they do all this RRR business. So, anyway, so you study um, these are quite uh, in details, excepting the bar and pie chart. The others are, uh, if you want to go into details, there are uh, separate subjects are there. So, risk management, this is your investment risk. So, normally the uh, students who are employed by all these banks and all these things, they in our case, they calculate this investment risk. The how to calculate the investments and there are actually two or three tools, mathematical tools by which you can calculate that. So, that is covered in this enterprise risk management. So, anyway, so this uh, coming to the design spiral, so um, that is that. Now, after this what you do, there are number of stages uh, and uh, in your case that um, what will happen is uh, you have to make uh, the after your design style, you have to strike upon a concept design. So, what are the different stages of design? So, this is the first you strike what is called the concept design. So, that means after from your preliminary studies, you have formulated what should be your requirement and all these things, you come as a concept design or sometimes this is called an artist impression. Here is your pen, you just make a sketch. Now, after this you go for a basic design. Now, basic design is little bit more complicated than concept design, is little bit more in detail. Now, after this basic design, you make a detailed design. Now, in the, uh, a concept design, you start here, that is uh, in the feasibility study. You start with this concept design and end with the final design. So, that is the design process. So, detailed design is your final design. Now, even after this, you do not stop. Detailed design is that means you have prepared what is called the detailed general management drawing. But if you give a general management drawing to a shipyard, say hull shop, will it be able to fa fabricate your ship or offshore structure? They will not be able to fabricate. So, you have to prepare what is called working drawings or construction detailed design. construction drawings. So, that means say uh, in this detailed design, you have made what are the detailed design drawings that are required? Detailed design you will be asked to produce these sort of drawings. So, the, the general management is one of the drawings then the what is called the hull form design, that is your lines plan or form selection. In this of course, in ships and also structure. So, these are the, then you have structural drawings. 
structural drawings, the most important of your structural drawing is your midship section. Midship section, then you have uh, what is called the profile. Then uh, you have forward and aft body. Then you have deck, deck structural design, deck plans. So, these are some of the structural design which have to be produced. And remember, these structural design drawings, these are approved by surveyor. You will go for surveyor approval. Now, from these uh, uh, drawings, you have to produce construction drawings. So, a drawing is a engineer's language of conveying to the shipyard or hull shop how a particular item is to be built. So, you have to prepare a large number of construction drawings. So, here you will, it only be three or four drawings, but here you will get in hundreds. So, you have to explain all each and every detail in the drawing to your say the hull shop manager or your supervisor, otherwise the shipyard will not be able to fabricate. Suppose you have given a deck layout, but you have not given the construction detail. So, you have to give all the detailing say bracket. So, like this is a bracket. So, how much will be the cutout, how much will be this length, how much will be this length, this length, all these dimensions have to be given. What is the plate thickness of your say bulkhead plate thickness of your floor? All these detailing has to be given and detailing you know you connection details have to be given, especially connections. Now, this actually you have to do in your hall shop. Connections and what? Weld size. So, just giving two plates a drawing like this is not sufficient for shipyard to fabricate because you will get the dimensions because you have to give what type of welding you are going to use, what is the size of welding. Say this is a say T joint. So, you have to specify the root and fillet, root and throat thicknesses have to be specified. Now, whether you are going to continuously weld around the bracket or give intermittent welding that also has to be specified. Otherwise, he is not cannot build the structure. So, all information relating to building your hull has to be there in the uh, your this thing, your drawing. So, these are called construction drawings. So, this will go as far as your structural drawing is going. The whole set of drawings have to be produced for your ventilation and piping and all these drawings have to be interfaced. Suppose you make a weldment of a part of a ship. So, obviously, you are just not making the hull, but nowadays they make everything together and then they weld the uh, weldments together. So, those things have to be prepared anyway. So, those are all the uh, construction scenario. Now, after construction, what are you going to do? Say your construction phase is over. After construction, then installation. This is also very critical, especially in offshore. How many deck modules you can construct and the installation, the two basic methods I have told you, one is the hookup method, the other is what? Floater, floating method, where you take the deck onto the, uh, uh, load it onto the truss, I think that uh, is called the floater, floating, floater method, the other is the hookup method. So, which method you are going to use? Uh, what you, where are your installation and direction drawings? So, here also you have to press installation erection drawings. 
construction drawings. These are to be produced and the last is what after this. We have to produce a operating manual. How you are going to operate the platform? What are the sequence of operation? Hmm. Operating manual, maintenance. So all these documents have to be prepared. If you go to your shipyard. Uh, doing shipbuilding or offshore engineering, we will come across all these stages. So, these are some of the scenarios. Now, before we go into the structure aspect, um, um, preliminary all these design st stages uh, you have to fix up, then um, field development I have already told you and basic design is uh, so this is already done now uh, in your when you come to this stage the basic design there are number of aspects which are going to be covered because basic design is just coming before your final design now here you make you decide on platform configuration. Now, here actually you are now fixing up whether it is going to be a floating platform or a jacket. And then you calculate loads, we are going coming to the structural design. So, this is very important. So, this comes under a separate branch of study that is called MET Ocean, MET Ocean seismic if you for fixed structures. So, this will come ice of course, we are not much bothered. Then the other is called site specific information. Now, besides main met ocean, I told you this is required. the major is water depth. Water depth is a very important design criteria that is the size of the structure will actually depend on the uh, met ocean that is wind waves current and water depth. There is actually the ground, so water depth all these things are there, then temperature, soil characteristics etcetera. Uh, these are some of the, yeah. then I am not writing, then you have now this is, is a very important although it is not there, this is called environmental impact studies in any major this type of offshore project if you go, you have to make a what is called an environmental impact studies. So, what influence the structure has on the immediate environment? Suppose there is oil pollution, there is a leakage of oil. So, now in the nearby there is a big city is there. So, obviously, there will be lot of uh, pollution coming onto the beach and all those things. Then if you react a say dam, say I am just talking or a say gravity platform or some fixed structures, then how it is going to influence your flow rate in the sea. That is there will be inundation in one place and there will be siltation in one place. So, for dams actually this is very crucial. So, all those things have to be studied, these are called environmental impact studies 
and here we have to create different scenarios. scenarios in computer. So, this is called computer simulation. You have to do lot of simulation studies. In the computer, you can generate nice graphics with combinations of environmental loads that is waves with current, waves with uh, say tidal current they say large number of scenarios are created and their influence on the in immediate en uh, environment is studied. So, these are called environmental impact studies. So, any major not only in offshore in many major <coughs> civil engineering work you have to make a environmental impact study. And then of course, so these are some of the loads and then you have to uh, um, uh, the dynamic loads are also, I will just give you the description in detail where this comes dynamic loads from impact vibration studies, vibration impact and all these things you have to study. So, so then you have to find out what is your design life based on fatigue. So, this is you have to calculate this, then accidental loads, load combinations, now what are the other things like damage stability. So, if you are is a floating platform, then you have to make a rigorous damage stability calculation. Damage stability, damage stability strength, how much is the remaining strength? How the column of a platform has broken? So, what is going to be the situation? Whether the platform is going to survive that damage or is not member broken, a bracing member is broken. So, all these studies of damage stability strength you have to carry out. Then of course, material is more or less known, material combinations, high strength steel uh, and mild steel then corrosion. So, all these studies will come under basic design. Then uh, the uh, certification requirements, what are the certification requirements? Here you have to see whether your design performs to the requirements of LRS DNG. Normally offshore structures you will find class standard ABS DNG, then you have API, MARPOL, IMO codes, it is very essential. You go to the design office you have to consult all these codes. Because why? Because ultimately those you have to produce the certified drawings. So, your surveyor will only certify those drawings which has followed these codes. So, he will ask you which code you have followed or not. So, this you uh, have to make a study. Owner's requirement, owner's special requirements. Now, uh, you will find uh, ships and offshore structures, they are actually tailor made 
tailor made uh, objects they are not like your maruti cars isn't it so there will be specific owners requirements for a particular design say owner will require say instead of say uh, 40 people accommodation 100 people accommodation so you have to provide that so there are specific owners requirement so those will have to be catered to there you are making a building okay so that has to satisfy the uh, person who will be staying there so what are the specific requirements so all this will come under the basic design phase now after this you go to the detailed design now detailed design is more important because this is your fabrication stage is coming so here you have to do lot of accurate engineering analysis so here loading you have to find out the wind wave and current wind wave current earthquakes etc then you have uh, accidental loads so you make a thorough assessment of all the loads then construction construction basically is your fabrication what else is there load out will be there transportation will be there these are after the fabrication stages so these actually separate documents have to be prepared for all this with your drawing and all the literature remember that then installation at sea so this has to be done so all these detailed documents have to be prepared fatigue corrosion etc will come here and then you have accidents local designs so at a particular locality what are the uh, design stresses and what you are going to give so those have to be calculated then you to prepare i told you design drawings now these are very important because they are not similar to your ship ship drawings so platforms first i told you you have to prepare deck plans elevations main and secondary trusses what is your main truss main truss is basically your the under sea that is your template that is the main truss secondary truss is your the deck supporting truss that is called a secondary truss then you have to prepare connections drawing of connections these are called joints or sometimes these are called a joint can and stiffness welding details this i told you now whatever things you do in ships so this will be more rigorous piles pile and marine riser
your riser details. Our details are these, you do not mix up marine riser with pipe, better you write them as separate. The other is pad eyes. What is a pad eye? Pad eye is a lug which is welded to a particular structure like this. This is called a pad eye. Now, here you put a lifting hook. So, where you are going to position these lifting hooks? So, those are called pad eyes. And for transportation, you require tie downs. Tie downs I have already explained to you. So, these are also sometimes called C fastenings. in transportation. So, these are typical offshore tie downs, then the uh, launch trusses or launch girder for jackets, then details. for fabrication. So, these are your uh, design drawings have to be prepared for this and specifications you have to prepare. Your drawings are not enough, you know, because if you want to make a particular object, you have to prepare what you are going to give to the customer. So, these are based on in specifications. So, under this you have design and construction details, offshore platforms. what you are going to offer to the customer. So, that will be included in the specification. Specification will also be part of contract. Normally, it is a part of contract. So, very important. Then, what equipments you are going to give to the customer? You have to specify equipments such as pumps, cranes, what are the capacity? I mean the technical specification you give. All the technical specifications have to be given in this document called specifications or contract specifications. Say you are giving a certain crane, then you have to specify what is the uh, lifting capacity, okay. Uh, what is your luffing arm? That is called the reach of the crane. All these have to be specified. Then painting plans, paintings and corrosion. Now, painting is very important. Why? There are two aspects of painting. One is because it gives aesthetics and the other is it prevents in our marine uh, this thing, ships, because large extent it prevents corrosion. So, you will come across, I do not uh, know whether you are studying corrosion in detail, you will come across a paint which is called, there are two types of paints, you will call anti-corrosive and anti-fouling paints in the hull of the ship. So, painting plants have to be prepared starting from primer, how many coats. So, this is primer, then you will come to anti-fouling, anti-corrosive, anti-corrosive, anti-fouling. So, these number of coats have to be specified. This is your painting plan has to be prepared. So, this is come under specifications, then uh, the hookup.
how you are going to install the platform and commissioning. So, this will come. Then critical operations. So, this I think we have mentioned earlier, but this uh, the other specific areas it can cover is welding, then load out, tie downs. So, these are already covered in transportation, but this have to be given in detail. apart from your basic design. These in we have to prepare lot of detailed calculations. Launching. In detail. Then piling. How you are going to drive piles, sequencing of piling. Then you have marine riser installation. Then well grouting. deck installation. Then commissioning. Then last is escape. Evacuation. So, in marine, uh, if you go for all these marine uh, structures, there is a escape, there is a crucial area. So, in ships, you come across this, what is called, in ships actually normally you have to prepare this, LSA, FFA plans. Now, how you are going to prepare this? Suppose you are employed in a shipyard or an offshore company. You have to normally call LSA is called life saving appliances, FFA is firefighting appliances. This will adhere to IMO, MARPOL. Now, these they are separate drawings for ships, you have to prepare separate plans means drawings. Now, if you want to prepare those drawings, the number and the capacity of all the fire pumps, extinguishers, you consult the IMO. IMO is the, you have to consult SOLAS, SOLAS requirements. SOLAS comes under IMO regulations, MARPOL is for pollution. So, these are some of the jobs you have to do before we go into the uh, actual structure. Now, after you have done this, then you will get the detailed load that is coming onto the structure.